All right, guys, and welcome back to the podcast. The, oh, no. <laughs> Great start, Em. What, what'd you do? I, I, <laughs> I was saying the name of the podcast backwards. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, podcast Council. Yes. Uh, Amino Assassin's Creed. <laughs> Um, yeah, welcome to the Council Podcast, where it, I think everyone is tired, so... Just about. Yeah, I know for... Sleep is for the week. <laughs> okay, so with us tonight, we do have, once again, Belloc. Belloc. Hey. Yeah, um, he's yep, here. You got it right this time. I got it right this time, yay. And also, we have our wonderful UK representative, who is... It's one in the morning for him right now. We have Michael here today. Is Please this don't a... tie me in with the UK. I'm Irish. Leave me alone. <laughs> You're Irish, but you live in the UK, so... Not by choice, but fair enough. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and of course, I am the Mama Embers, which I really should change that name eventually, because that is starting to feel cringy to me. Um, I think it's fine. <laughs> but today we're just going to talk some about some past uh, AC stuff, talk about the future for Assassin's Creed as a franchise in general, and whatever else just happens to come up. So first things first, um, let's start with Michael because he's the one later at night, and I don't know how much longer his coffee is going to last. Tim, how are you doing tonight? <laughs> Well, 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 I swear I didn't kill them. <laughs> well, I'm, I mean, sorry, I am doing very well, thank you. I have got a nice cup of coffee here, and yeah, that's about it. What about you, Belloc? Uh, I'm fine. I'm just sitting here with the Assassin's Creed movie playing in the background, and uh, just looking forward to getting the show on the road. Okay, Yeah. okay. Just please don't have your audio mess with us. <laughs> right, like of course. Don't um, I got it turned down. Okay. So, first things first. Uh, your first question was, what is Assassin's Creed going to be like after Valhalla? Kind of what we're looking forward to and where they should be going. Now, the weirdest thing about this is the fact that one of the main directors and several other people from Ubisoft was recently fired. So this can go anywhere. So let's just start the discussion. <laughs> yeah, I, I've expressed my concerns at how at how Valhalla is going to go without Ashraf Ismail. It just feels like <clears throat> it seems like they're pretty far into production. But regardless of that, it feels like that a lot can change, and not for the better. At least that's the way I see it. Things got silent on my end. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm trying to eat too. <laughs> oh, you were, okay. <laughs> you had a mouthful of food, all right. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry, I just got home from work, and I'm trying to eat dinner right now. So. Gotcha. <laughs> like that is one interesting thing being from the digital media world for about two years um, pretty much Valhalla should be in the last stage of its development just fixing up bugs um, fine tuning assets to make them look nicer more aesthetic so they don't really have the time to scrap a the whole story and change the whole story of the game. So we should be fine with that aspect unless you decide to make small minor tweaks to it. Because you have to think they still have to produce all of the game discs and so forth before the release date gets them shipped out. Which thanks to our lovely um, C-Virus is what I'm calling it. Just in mm. case the lovely, lovely um, overheads decide to try to take this down. Um, 
because of that reason, production of those items are going to be slower as well, especially when we're thinking they have to put together the collector's editions. So at this point, they don't have the time to change much from what I kind of understand. Okay, so, well, that's we a little more... That, that, go right ahead. No, I was just like about to say something like repetitive, so... <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I, I was just going to say that's a little more reassuring. I just felt like it would have some sort of Joss Whedon effect, you know, with Justice League and how that turned out. I just feel like it would it was going to have uh, a similar effect. But uh, it, it can't be worse than the sequel trilogy of Star Wars. Oh, on that I can agree. On that I can definitely agree. <laughs> okay, uh, Michael. Just... Do you have anything to say about it? Uh, a bit, yes. Although it's quite worrying to see that our beloved franchise is up in the air at the moment, I believe if they can get a proper director behind, or a new director with a good vision behind the wheel, we may have quite a few, hopefully, a few more installments to go. Yeah, that was English. <laughs> All right, so that's that's an interesting insight on the matter. What do you think, Em? Um, so <laughs> I blinked out for a second. <laughs> like as I said before, with the hollow, we're pretty much done. What we get is what we get with our past director. So even with the business world, when you get a new director or a new CEO. Or new board of directors, so so on and so forth, you are going to see changes. So recently we have had an era where a lot of the games are RPG type, where it's free world, you go around doing smaller missions, and you feel like you can go do some of the story stuff. Um, I could see them either continuing going this route because they're starting to get comfortable with it. Like we have Origins, Odyssey, and now Valhalla, having this huge, huge open world that we can even compare with with previous games, such as Seneca, Unity, etc., etc., etc. So, some things I kind of hope that are doing. Of course, last time we did talk about AC Sisterhood. So, Hope we do get to see some more female characters coming up, some more LGBT characters coming up, just to have that representation as well. Because you do have to uh, put into aspect that, hey, for about 100 years now, but over 100 years since media has started, everything has been, uh, if you have an LGBT person in it, it has to be the bad guy. That's literally one rule that they had, um, such as like Peter Pan and Captain Hook is supposed to be LGBT, which I didn't find out until recently. So be able to see some more representation with that. I know that Cassandra is it is supposed to be bi, and there was like the whole thing with Jacob supposed to be bi that fans are coming up with, but I'm not too sure about it. <laughs> I'm no. sorry, I can't get over the fact that Captain Hook is gay. I mean, Peter Pan <laughs> makes sense because he's a lovable twink, but really, Captain Hook? <laughs> yeah, that was the whole thing, that for a while, if you had an LGBT character that you would in the media, they had to be the villain. They couldn't be shown as the hero. I n- never knew that. That is incredibly sad to hear. <laughs> I may not sound it because I'm high on caffeine, but that is actually quite depressing. Trust me, I am drinking a monster right now, and I chugged most of it on my walk home. So I'm I'll, chug, I'm chug, out chug, there. chug, chug, chug. I'll, I'll finish chugging it while someone's talking. Okay, so past Valhalla, uh, what are you kind of hoping to see come out with more? Games in the future? Do you maybe futuristic or certain time periods you want to see? 
personally, I would love to see a more modern approach to the Assassin's Creed franchise. More, not necessarily modern or futuristic, but possibly to the Prohibition era, era with the Stonewall riots and, as they hinted at or joked about in Unity, the Jazz Age junkies. That sounds like a hell of a lot yes. of fun. I actually, I would love to see something like that. Uh, I actually remember when we did the day, this day in history challenge. I believe you were the one who did the Solo Riots post. Am I correct? Yes, it wasn't very good, but yes, I did indeed make it. It was, it was still nice to be able to like feature LGBT history. Sorry, my dad like reads. Well, that reads. He listens to LGBT history books so much and tells me about it. Another cool idea is if we do more modern, I know we are coming close to the release of Watch Dogs Legion as well, where you're able to recruit members into your group and each one has different abilities. If they did something with that with Assassin's Creed as well, I would be down for it. I kind of would. I know that Watch Dogs and Assassin's Creed is the same universe, but even if like in Watch in Watch Dogs Legions, like they had like an assassin type character that you can play as, like I I would be satisfied with that. I might I want to pick it up for the Joan Girl, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just picking it up for the Gangster Granny. If she wears an assassin's hood or not, I'm all right with it. <laughs> Well, for me, I have a character who like is who has a spider from, um, because she's a more futuristic character, and I'm like, I want to be, I want to be drone girl. <laughs> the gangster granny is also definitely one I will want to get on my team. She'll be the first person I'll make a beeline straight for the nursing home. <laughs> 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 what about you, oh, Bellic? Who are you after? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, I don't know who I would be after personally, <laughs> but uh, re- regarding the uh, where I think Assassin's Creed should go, and I think this is a bit of a odd choice. I feel like it should go back to the medieval era, not during Altair's time, but some point afterwards, where it should Patrick Cormac. Where the Templars still look like Templars, and uh, during the time of the Black Plague, Sai, if you're watching this, that's all the Shea Patrick Cormac I'm going to bring up, and now I'm going to continue on with the uh, subject. So <laughs> that is yeah. that is my promise fulfilled. <laughs> I don't and know like... what you're talking about, Shea Patrick Cormac Bellic. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> um... Did you know that Shea makes his own luck? Yes, I did. Michael, Felix, <laughs> we're done. We gave Sai what she wanted. <laughs> <laughs> um, One can okay. never have enough Shay. Oh, God. <laughs> I'll kick you out of the call. Liam, she kind of got stabbed. Oh. Oh, boy. Anyway, <laughs> all right, before we get sidetracked. Okay, um, so. <laughs> it, it just feels like hey, that. Hey, sidetracked. Oh, my God. Michael, get out. I, <laughs> All right then, I'm sorry. I will deal with you later. <laughs> but uh, jokes on any- you, I'm into that shit. Anyway, I um, I feel like with the way Assassin's Creed games have advanced, uh, gameplay wise and graphics wise, I feel like it would be interesting to see, um, what the medieval era would look like, especially after the opening to unity i definitely feel like there's more opportunities uh more areas of the medieval era to explore uh not just in the middle east but in england as well so i feel like we should maybe try going back to that era i don't know what the specifics are i just really want to see some more templars looking like templars (laughs) I would actually love to do it with the Black Plague era. That's only because for a role play, I actually made a Templar who was a play doctor. Oh. So, and that was so interesting. Like, yeah, he was kind of more of the 
neutral ish ranging over there, but he still had the whole Templar father of others father understanding ethics in mind. So it was like his way to be able to practice as a doctor. He was such a fun character, even though he was like very short lived. But I looked it, up like it's so much during the Black Death. They're not going to live long anyway. But I see what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be sad though. Like if the character dies at the end of it because they get the plague. Oh. Um... Oh my God! They pulled the the good old Red Dead on you. I know that I didn't want to spoil. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, I guess like, spoilers. Red... I mean, no, definitely nothing about Red Dead was mentioned here. Definitely not. The, game, the game's been out for a while now, so I think I think we're good. Yeah, I think so. Um. <laughs> so, anything else? Uh, nothing more from well, me on that matter. Personally, oh. I. Oh, sorry. Oh, I. No, that's okay. I was going to Go give it to you, Michael. Oh, sorry. Um, other than the Jazz Age junkies and the Prohibition era, I would love to see what they hinted at in Assassin's Creed 3 of going fully back to the Isu era, just before, or maybe just before, or way before the Toba catastrophe. We had a nice big taste of it in Odyssey's Fate of Atlantis DLC, but what if we could truly experience the first civilization in their heyday way before the human uprising and ultimate decline and death of this once grand civilization that that would be interesting too i haven't played much of the ac games but i did do a lot of reading when i first kind of got into into the community to learn the basics of the games and I really think that we'll be interested to see the first civilization and be able to just go into those concepts from the original games one to three, and um, including Revelations and Brotherhood, when we did have Desmond to have that connection between the modern and whatever character you were playing as. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that would be interesting as well. Maybe not explore it in, like, as a whole campaign to a game, but maybe, like, let it be half the campaign and half of it whatever story we're going for. Like, does that make sense? Yeah, there's an interesting way to think about it. Possibly have two stories playing out at once, one in the modern day, one in the Isu era, and somehow find a way to tie them both together. Right. Possibly, off the top of my head, this first civilization scientist is trying to stop the Great Catastrophe. Actually, no, that's a lot like Desmond shit. (laughs) Fine, Uh, there's a scientist that wants to stop human enslavement and tries to find a way to counteract the Apple of Eden's power or its control over people. And a very far descendant of them in the future wants to learn what this scientist learned. That isn't even English, damn it. <laughs> to try and stop. Well, the assassins and the templates, they want peace in their own separate ideologies. Maybe they want to find a way to just make the Apple of Eden redundant in the modern age. Actually, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just throwing a bunch of ideas at the wall and seeing what sticks. <laughs> oh no, I'm getting a phone call real quick. Just guys talk. Don't be crazy. God Let me go damn it, Em. I'm sorry. <laughs> Unacceptable. All right. But while she's talking, I will say I can't I actually do kind of get what you're going for, uh, Michael. Thank you. Yeah. I I didn't know what I was going for myself, so that's reassuring. <laughs> It just, uh, I suppose, when it comes to exploring uh, Assassin's Creed history, such as the Isu, uh, there is just a little bit of concern regarding how Ubisoft's going to handle something like that. 
because it's no secret that they've pretty much put their own foot in their mouth time and time again throughout the throughout recent years. You know what I mean? Yeah, they have made quite a few mistakes. Yeah, that they have, but is uh, one way to put it. Yeah, but I'm not saying that they haven't learned from those mistakes. And but they do seem to amp themselves up for something really good, but then they keep letting themselves down at the last minute. For example, Layla, when she was first announced in Origins, the hype was right at the top. Everyone was like, oh, wow, are we going to get a new Desmond sort of story in the modern age? And then in Odyssey, they're like, screw it, let's make her a god. Okay, how does that oh, fit into yeah. the modern age? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Staff goes, brr! <laughs> oh, jeez, I just used an outdated meme. Uh, I could go on for days about Layla right now, but... Uh, well, yeah, we I... have time to spare. Please, go on. <laughs> but um, I do see your point. I'll, I'll save that for a later episode. But, um, yeah, but regardless of... Um, aside from... Uh, thinking about how Ubisoft's going to handle it, I still feel like it would be interesting nonetheless to go back to that certain point in time in Assassin's Creed history and see how things were back then, how, like, to personally experience it for ourselves and such, rather than uh, see it in, say, a comic or a quick cinematic that you have to, uh, that you can only see by unlocking a puzzle or something or however that worked. I can't remember what game that was, but it, I believe it just... you're talking about Brotherhood, uh, the glyphs and the what are they called rifts, rifts and glyphs. Yes, it was. Yeah, there was a cinematic about uh, where we saw Adam and Eve steal an apple and running through what I think were laboratories or something. It seemed that way from speculation. It's the Isu city that was called Eden, that the Bible and other religions turned into the Garden of Eden. Mm. And the mountain that you see in the background is, or people have guessed that it's Kilimanjaro, leading to real life speculation that human life could have started in Africa or that area of the world. Ah, okay. Sorry, I've read way too many conspiracy theories recently. <laughs> hey guys, I'm back. Oh good, I thought you'd never come back. <laughs> no, oh, I told him we were recording, so he was like, okay. I was kind of enjoying all mass talks about genocide, Belly. <laughs> oh my god. Um, oh no. Okay, so I think, I feel like we pretty much wrapped up that topic there. All right. Unless I, M has anything else to say about it? Uh, not really. I do want to, though. Um, I don't know. What am I thinking? Oh yes, announcements. I okay. don't know, M. What are you thinking? You <laughs> kind of have to talk and tell us. I'm sorry, Michael. Okay, so we did just get think. in. Boy, okay. So we did just get... <laughs> stop. Okay. <laughs> um. So we got in some new information today. Actually, thank you. I think it was you, Michael. You sent that, All right? Indeed, I yes. saw the okay. notification and immediately spammed it on our chat. <laughs> but apparently, congratulations to everyone. Ballot is being released a week early. So. The initial release date was November 17th of this year. Now they're releasing it on November 10th. So if you have pre-orders already set or make sure to go grab it on the 10th. Or if you still need to make a pre-order, if you want to get the extra mission, the way at the Berserker, make sure you do it soon because they took away a week from us to do that. So... <laughs> I booked off an entire week from work to enjoy Valhalla. <laughs> and they released it early! Oh no. Uh, also, I did mention this in the news post. 
on the news quarter last Friday. But if you are planning to buy either the PS5 or the Xbox One X and you buy Valhalla on the older systems, you will be able to transfer it to your new game with the new updated graphics once you get your new system. And since it's not being released until later this year. So oh, wow. all so that means all you have to do is take your PS4 or Xbox One disc and put it into the disc tray of your new system. If you had the physical copy or if you had the digital copy, just pop on over to the store and you can download the game there. So that means you won't have to spend another $60 to get the game. And you'll still be able to pre-order it for the older system, the newer system, or if like your family, you're sharing the disc or you're going to be sharing it with a friend. So no worries. You can buy the older system game and be able to transfer it to the new system when they finally release that. So there's still no real release date for the system. It just says the holidays this year. So, yeah. Well, that's actually pretty cool. That is actually incredibly generous and nice to hear. I kind of hope, though, that they do also give us a full functioning playback with the new systems if I do ever upgrade to the PS5 before my PS4 dies. Um, I wanted to have that back capability, so I'm kind of praying they do let us do that in general. That might be something I'll update if it comes to terms. Also, lastly, I did also post a video um, in the last news corner update about how to get the Valhalla armor set in Odyssey. Um, you, I just found it on YouTube real quick and put it on there. So if anyone is wanting to get that armor set, it is free. I'm not sure how long it's going to be on in the game. You just have to find it on the map. So the video is going to help guide you to find it. It's supposed to be like the best armor in the game, some people are saying. So, yeah. Hmm. I'm tempted to reinstall Odyssey on my Xbox after hearing that. Yeah. It might be statistically the best armor, if that's true. But... No, no. The... Visually, I personally prefer either... Actually, which armor do I normally use? Oh, yeah. The armor of the... Oh, God, how do you pronounce it? Discates. The Atlantean supervisor, essentially. Essentially, mysterious armor, but in black. Right. Personally, I prefer the visuals of that rather than the... What was it called? Northern Traveler set? Embers, I think he's asking you. Cricket noises here. Oh wait, sorry. What? <laughs> I'm I'm sorry. Can you please repeat that? <laughs> oh no, sorry. I was just saying that personally, I would prefer the armor of the Discates, or however you pronounce that word, from the Atlantean DLC to um, the Northern Traveler set. I believe it's called. Yeah, unfortunately, um, I don't have that game. I didn't buy it. Because after seeing the gameplay and so forth, I'm like, no, I'm never going to get through it. It's just going to be a waste of money to me. So. Good choice. Yeah. <laughs> Ever since Definitely I heard, dodged a bullet there. Yeah, when I heard like Aiden and uh, Hydra complain about it, the game, just like everyone else in general complaining about it. I'm like, no. No, I'm going to go get Unity instead. And I've been slowly playing Unity. I've been trying. I am playing an Assassin's Creed game, guys. It's a miracle. <laughs> All right, Yay! finally. Yes, and I did um, pre-order Ooh. Valhalla last week. I did send proof in the leadership chat to show that I yes, did pre-order it. took you it. long enough. I'm sorry, I had to move my pre-order from another game to that one. <laughs> and I could have just nice. like, called GameStop and like, hey, I need to change my pre-order. They want you in person. Even though they also want us to social distance. But hey. It is what it is. But it is a risk that you must be willing to take. Do you want to be healthy and have no Assassin's Creed game? Or do you want to be <laughs> dying but play the new Assassin's Creed game? I love my <laughs> I extra which mission, Which way I would choose. It's a win-win situation. I know which one I would choose. <laughs> Death and a new Assassin's Creed game. Win-win. 
<laughs> oh god, now like my work's like lo- um slogan that they've been saying for the past like how many months has it been since every it's March. Started in March. So six months. The past six months they've been saying, Oh, it's a win win. It's a win win. Be safe. It's uh. a win win. Every fifteen minutes. <laughs> I actually was hey, almost it's memorized. Than Maria Curry's all I want for Christmas is you every two minutes. Um no. Christmas. Okay. Okay, I'm going on a rant about Christmas. <laughs> so Okay, let's save that for the Christmas Uh-oh. special. No, oh, no, no, no. Oh my god, she's gonna turn into the Grinch. Run. Put the, put the gag in her mouth, put the gag in her no. mouth, put the gag in her mouth. <laughs> no, okay. I just have to complain about two Wait, songs. You get the rope, I'll get the gun. <laughs> All right, go right ahead. No, they just two songs. Okay. So at my grocery store I work at, I work in the bakery department. I was still very, very new to the apartment when the holiday set. But there was hours where you're by yourself. It might be a slower day. So your only enjoyment is the Christmas music. It's not every day you hear Carol at the Bells played less slow or slower than Silent Night. Or Jingle Bells sung as if I just took like three shots of espresso and chugged them off during five minutes. To be able to jingle bell, out. jingle bell, yes. jingle all the way. Yes. Oh, what fun! No, no, Michael, Michael, faster oh. than that. It faster? was fast. It well, was don't so mind fast. I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, okay, that's my rant about Christmas. I will have so much more to tell once we get into the holiday season. You will basically just right. be hearing me screaming in the corner for fifteen minutes straight. Um, yeah. And the change to any other day is what exactly? <laughs> okay <laughs> that is true so the other we're it's okay guys we're like past the halfway mark we're doing good <laughs> all right accomplishing yay. our goal yay okay. all right so, so the other topic today is shay patrick cormack would be proud of us uh, <laughs> we yeah. already went through this, Michael. Come on. Okay. I'm sorry. I just have to tell him that he makes his own luck. Children, chill. We got to stop making promises to Sai. Anyway, the next topic <laughs> is uh, where we talk about our best and worst memories playing Assassin's Creed games since Emmer's uh, is still in the process of playing her first games, I believe... No, no, no. I got almost or all the way through AC3. That is, oh, okay. I, I need to talk about AC3 for a moment. Unless I okay. eat some of my food, though, first. Like, you guys talk for a second. <laughs> okay, so the way this works is each of the three of us is going to give a detailed description of our favorite moment of playing Assassin's Creed, and our least favorite moment, playing Assassin's Creed. Like, say, a certain mission that you took part in that either uh, pissed you off to no end, or it was the best thing you've ever experienced in your entire life as an Assassin's Creed fan. Does everybody get that? Yep, that makes sense. Okay. So, I was gonna say that Emmer should go last since she's still playing the games or starting to. But um, okay. if she has, if she has something to, do you have your? Do you know what your favorite and least favorite memory is already? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like so far. From playing, okay, so. all right, all right. Well, in that case, we'll let you go first. Give us your best one. Okay, so my best memory so far. Uh, it is AC3. That's the one I played the most of so far throughout the series. Um, mostly just exploring the woods by the homestead, especially like during the winter time. That's like my, it. It's just so peaceful and relaxing, and it's away from the war that's going on oh, yeah. just down the way. I will spend just hours just like walking around, like just listening to the music. So. That's probably my best memory of it. Um, then to the worst memory. So I was actually really close to defeating Assassin's Creed 3, I think. But here's the, here's the mistake I made. 
I made such a bad, bad mistake. I didn't know you can upgrade your shit. <laughs> <laughs> I went and played a lot of the game with the basic robes, the basic weapons. So I actually hit a stumbling block where I got stuck <laughs> and I couldn't go back. I can't remember the exact name of the mission because it has been a few years since I played the game. But you would run through like a small portion of, the, of a village, jump onto a horse, and had to chase down some Templars on the horse through like the woods and so forth. Oh, and yeah. I kept Rings a bell. dying over and over and over <laughs> and over again. Because my weapons were crap. <laughs> I spent days, weeks, months going back to Assassin's Creed 3 just to try and finish this mission. And I couldn't go back. I couldn't leave the mission to go and upgrade my stuff. I was stuck in this void where I had to complete the mission to be able to get back to free roam, but I needed to go to free roam to upgrade my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and to, to this day, to this day, our PlayStation 3 is in my sister's bedroom. On my account, I still have that game save. <laughs> <laughs> I have watched yeah. videos to try to figure out how to get through this. I have as a help from friends and it's like low just do it you're you'll be okay i'm like bitch no my weapons are shit <laughs> <laughs> and after that i couldn't play assassin's creed games for like forever also my other worst memory assassin's creed 4 people love the pirate ships i fucking hate the pirate ships okay <laughs> blasphemy <laughs> I'm sorry. This is why. It was the very first... I'm sorry, um, but you're just going to have to walk the plank here. It's an unpopular <laughs> opinion. I. It was like the first mission with the jackdaw. And like you were learning like how to attack other ships and so forth. I don't know why. I think I just suck at playing video games. That could be the you reason why. You heard it here, why. folks. She admitted it. <laughs> but I couldn't get past that mission. No matter how much I tried. <laughs> and that's like very, very early in the game too. When you're just being an imposter assassin still. Like that was the that was the game that got released when I first learned about Assassin's Creed. I mentioned in the Q&A post. And so that was the game I really, really wanted to play. I bought the Americans collection. Just so I could play AC3 because American Revolution. And so I could play AC4 because of the memories I've had as a kid when the first game first came out in middle school. But yeah, I, I probably can never go back to playing AC4 only because I don't like the ships and how you steer them and so forth. Just the mechanics of the ships. I don't think I can actually play that game because of the ships. I'm sorry, guys. I'm probably going to be see, like, receiving death threats or something now. <laughs> Tell the girl walk off the plank. Hey, look, can we kill her? Do no, it. Stay, you can, stay your okay. blade. Stay your blade. Stay your blade. <laughs> Michael, right. you can, like, tie me up or Jokes something. Jokes on you. I'm a temple. Around. <laughs> and I'm a neutral, so ha. <laughs> well, trust me, Emma. I can actually relate to what you're talking about. I'm not a... I, I wouldn't say I'm against the naval combat, but I'm not exactly a fan either. Yeah, but that's my um, best and worst memories of the franchise so far. Of course, I am playing Unity right now, and I know some of the spoilers of the game, which I'm kind of scared to have to go through and cry. Mm. <laughs> because I did like look up uh, stuff about um, Unity, because of Emma, my post French Revolution OC. So, yeah. Right. Okay. All right. So, 
Michael, would you like to give us your best and worst moments in Assassin's Creed? Of course. Uh, personally, the two worst moments for me in Assassin's Creed would have to be in Assassin's Creed 3. Brilliant game, but I don't know if it was just a glitch I ran into or I was just playing bad at the mission. And I'm very sorry to our American audience here, but I believe his name is Paul Revere. You have to... Yes, Paul Revere. You got it right. Yeah. Oh, yay! (laughs) Woohoo! You have to guide him through the woods and avoid... English troops and essentially he doesn't tell you where you need to go you just have to listen to his audio cues and the bastard kept me going in circles this way Connor this way okay okay we'll go over here no there's English here Connor this way (laughs) yes I I, I know that we've been here for the last two hours where do I have to put this goddamn lantern this way Connor I will shh I swear I will tie you to a tree and scalp you. This way, Connor! <laughs> That's it. Screw it. I- I'm going to AC4. <laughs> All oh, my gosh. It-, it had some good moments, like, I believe, not catchphrase, uh, his memorable line, the English are coming, the English are coming. No, Only for an English no. troop to... Oh, wait, what? The British are coming. Oh, whoops, it's, sorry, it's, I meant to say that. <laughs> but here's the thing, the yeah. ride of Paul Revere, he never actually finished it. Really? No, oh, he died. Well, that's depressing. For real? Serves him right for saying the same thing over and over I again. believe so. Hold on, let me make sure I got my facts correct. Because I've heard we do- history isn't what we remember, but I, I feel like that's something I should know by now. I, I'll admit I, it's been a long time since I've studied American history, so well, obviously I say a bunch of wrong rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, I still don't know enough about our own history <laughs> myself. I'm more the f- the worst part is I can tell you all about the Assassin's Creed law that's technically made up, like the East, oh, the Toba catastrophe, and everything. Yeah, we're good. Tell we're me good. to tell you something about real history and I'm screwed. <laughs> okay, so he did die? No, he that lived. Night? Oh, he lived. Oh. Okay. After the war, he actually went back to doing um, silver smithing. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm almost disappointed that he didn't die. <laughs> oh my god. I wonder why. <laughs> oh, here we go. Wait. This way, Connor. This way. <laughs> other than that going back to the question <laughs> Assassin's Creed 3's Homestead mini games great idea on paper some were quite fun but the original gamer trophy was the bane of my existence for weeks trying really? to beat the expert levels Fanarona, Nymans Morris and Bocce, I think it's called Bowls game. The bo- Bocce is fun. Nine Men's Morris was challenging. Fanarona, it seemed the game was rigged from the start. <laughs> Pull that re- reference. I tried to do it naturally. I just tried to ad lib it. I even ended up trying to <laughs> use a computer. Well, my laptop was next to me and I was copying its moves, essentially playing a computer against a computer. Nothing worked. It just kept winning every single time. My mother came in, looked at it, watched the game through and went, OK, do this, this, this and that. And it won first time. Wow. Weeks, weeks of torture. And she just noticed a pattern immediately. <laughs> Wow. (laughs) So, obviously, the fault is mine. But I won't forgive Father Timothy. Look, Achilles (laughs) has just died, and I'm playing Fanarona with you. Could you stop being such a sarcastic... Such and such names I'm not supposed to repeat because they're technically under-18s in this community. (laughs) 
Well, um, that... those are my two yeah. worst memories from Assassin's Creed. I uh-huh. can kind of agree with you with the games because I remember like when Connor went to prison and so forth, learning uh, one of them. I can't remember exactly which one. It has been a while, but I hated it so much with a burning passion. <laughs> <laughs> and I love how the developers at the time noticed how much people hated it because in the DLC Tyranny of King Washington there is a mission where you have to blend in with the evil corrupted guards where essentially he Connor makes two moves, picks up the board and just slaps it over the head of one of the guards causing a riot essentially just taking the piss out of the little mini game oh Spoilers alert for the Tyranny of King Washington. <laughs> yeah, we're well past spoiler warnings, Michael, at this point. Yeah, I'm just going to uh, put on like a major one again. So, yeah. <laughs> I get that last time. All right. So, uh, Michael, did you have more to add? Um, well, no, those are my worst memories. My favorite memories, or two memories that I recall immediately have either be the bonfire of the vanities with Ezio's speech was beautiful and tied up his character progression up to that point beautifully and telling Mm -hmm. the innocent people look my life's screwed up don't follow my example just live life how you should and not how anyone else tells you okay Ironic, because he's telling them how to live their lives, in a way, but let's <laughs> move past that. It was a lovely speech to see him thank all of his friends and allies for guiding him along the way. Yeah, that it was. That it was. That's, or personally, my all-time favourite thing. In AC3, in the modern-day section with Desmond, breaking into Abstergo, Warren Vidic telling him, look, I'm going to shoot your father unless you give me the apple. And Desmond to then just turn the apple on and say, fine, you want it? You can have it. Gets a guard to shoot Vidic in the head and just goes on this march down the hallway, killing everyone in his path. It's incredibly gory and messed up, but the power that you felt in that one 30 seconds to a minute segment was amazing (laughs) and the heavenly choir that was singing in the background was noise okay i'll shut up now no that was good that was real good a nice description (laughs) what about you bellic uh i also have two best ones and two worst ones uh the first one one of my best ones is whenever I was introducing my little brother uh, to playing. Oh my god, Assassin- baby Bellic! <laughs> you could call him that, yeah. But uh, uh, he was playing the Assassin's Creed Three mission, the Boston Tea Party, and he was just hacking away at red coats left and right on both of the ships, or was it three ships? I can't remember how many ships there were, but... uh, I believe it was three. Right. But either way, uh, he was just hacking and slashing away with the axe, shooting at them. And uh, the whole time, I was just playing Glee's Don't Stop Me Now, and just seeing such gory action with such a lighthearted song playing in the background was the funniest thing I ever saw at the time. (laughs) (laughs) Don't stop. Yeah, I'll have such a good time. Oh my god, I wish I was a good animator. (laughs) Someone should. Sai should definitely do that. Speaking of Sai, today's sponsor is Shea Patrick Cormac. No. Michael! Michael! (laughs) Sorry, I couldn't couldn't help it. I am going to shoot you in the face in Red Dead as soon as you get on. And you cannot stop me. I have a shotgun. Yeah, about, Joke's on um, you, I have a carbine, actually. No, that's worse. I'm about to... F- I have I'm a about, knife. I'm about to sail to the UK and beat the crap out of you for real. <laughs> <laughs> Joke's on you, I'm into that. 
Holy. Second best. Yeah. Second <laughs> Let's best. Let's move on to the, what we were trying to talk about. So, my second best would be in Assassin's Creed Origins. And there's a side mission where you have to track down uh, a man known as the Son of Ra, I believe, who is oh going around... God. I assume you know who I'm talking about. Yes, sorry, I, I love this mission. <laughs> yeah. You, no, it's okay. You track him down, he's... Uh, I think he's convincing people to slaughter innocents, something along those lines. You track him down to uh, a camp that he's imprisoned in, and I end up killing him, but that's not the fun part. The fun part is the escape. Like, somehow in the process of me getting to him, lions are set loose and oil jars are set on fire and soldiers are scrambling around. I kill a few. I climb up out of the flames. And it was just really fun with all the chaos going around and uh, just being able to get out on the first try unscathed, not dying. I don't know. Personally, me, it just felt like I just felt a sense of accomplishment in that moment, you know? I can but definitely and... see why. <laughs> My own experience with that mission was not as well as yours. I was incredibly underleveled, but too <laughs> stubborn to admit otherwise. So I kept essentially shooting a guy, hiding behind a rock, coming out, shooting the same guy, rinse and repeat. For a good ten minutes until I eventually got to Ra, the son of Ra, and I just hit her oil jar and let him burn to death. It's much easier. <laughs> and then the whole cinematic of him standing on a pyramid saying, "I'm the son of Ra, bow before me." Look, mate, you've just burnt alive. You're extra crispy. I'm going to put you on a stake and feed you to a cannibal. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> that is definitely something right there. <laughs> I'm sorry, please carry on, Bellic. It's all right. Now, whew, I'm about to get in a whole different mindset here. So. Oh no, he's channeling Psy. <laughs> so, one of my worst memories takes place in one of my former favorite Assassin's Creed games, and you'll find out why it's my former in a minute. Assassin's Creed Revelations. Now, it's a good game, don't get me wrong. But you guys know your first encounter with the uh, the gypsies? How you have to help them get their money back? Their money box? Oh, yes. That was a cool yeah. mission, the gypsies' curse. Yes, it was a cool mission. But somehow I managed to lose my touch because on the same guard, I tried to poison him. And I succeed in poisoning him, and I'm not noticed by anybody for about five seconds. Then those five seconds pass, and I'm a great distance away. Then suddenly the guards figure out, hey, maybe it was that guy that poisoned our guy. Let's go get him. And I desynchronize, and this has happened 15 times. Like, I, I had just installed the Ezio collection on my Xbox only to desynchronize 15 times and almost have a stroke. I got Damn. Down from it. <laughs> Talk about a gypsy's curse. <laughs> <sighs> but that wasn't the worst of it. The worst of it, unsurprisingly, takes place in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which I also just installed shortly before playing this mission. So I thought, eh, I hated Odyssey enough. Maybe there's still some fun to be had in this game. And the very first mission I play, I kid you not, I, this wasn't even in the game before I took it off my Xbox. There was, it's where Alexios uh, goes to catch up with an old friend slash lover or something, and they travel around a bit. Yeah, it's, it's okay. It's all sweet and nice and such. Then, we get to the beach. Or near the beach. And then she brings up 
uh, a certain gift that somehow made its way to the bottom of the ocean. Of course, I know there's going to be sharks. There were two sharks, in fact. And I was not going to get to this gift that somehow made its way to the bottom of the ocean without getting past these sharks. And so I try to kill them as many as I can, and it takes 15 minutes, not 15 minutes, 5 minutes, of going under, beating them up, going back up to regenerate health, going back down, and eventually getting killed even when I'm so freaking close. Like, I'm trying to kill these stupid bastard fish, and I'm so close, but they get me every time. And I think to myself, no present, no friend slash lover is worth this pain and suffering on my soul. And that's when I just decided to uninstall it forever. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Just that's that you. ending is just like, Alexios, I have a gift for you. You'll just have to it's kill the all these sharks. <laughs> no, 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 no. Fuck it, fuck it. That's it. Uninstall. <laughs> and then suddenly everything went dark. <laughs> oh, that was the worst moment of my gaming life. No, it's just like, oh, look, I have a present, but I dropped it. It's in the ocean. Fuck this shit, Surrounded I'm out. Do, 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 do. Fuck this shit, I'm out. And no thanks, don't mind me. <laughs> I'm a pack of must. Okay, I'm done. Oh, the caffeine's really kicked in. Yeah, I wish I did oh. that. On my when it came to Odyssey, per- it really screws you around, or maybe it just screws us around, because trying. I had my friend next to me once, and I tried to convince him, look, Assassin's Creed it is, has some very serious moments and very compelling stories. Look, I'll play through this one mission, and I'll show you just how dramatic it can be. I choose the mission One yeah. Bad Day. Where everybody is such a idiot. There's a blind guy that you help him back to his house. Oh, that's sweet. He then trips and kills himself. No. You then try, <laughs> you go up to the side of a mountain because some lady has stolen her horse from a stable. And she's just like, this man, he, he's given me this special flower that will turn my horse into a pegasi and it will fly off this cliff. She flew off the cliff, all right. Didn't survive. <laughs> oh, and then there was the other guy. I have raided this tomb and got the helmet of Ajax. I'm invulnerable. See, just kill me and I will come back to life. Okay. Oh, shit, I'm dead. Okay, who the hell did this? Ah, it's the eagle-bearing Mystios. I didn't do jack shit. I just watched as you guys killed yourself. Oh, no, it's him over there with Chikoros. And it's just this old man in tatty armor with a chicken on his arm claiming to be you. And he's just like, oh, I'm the eagle bearer. Do you want to get laid? <laughs> and I, I, I just I, went, you know what? Fine, you're right. Odyssey is just a mess. I, 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 I can't believe what you're telling me here. This was an actual mission. This is an actual mission, and I... Oh god, I believe it's around I, I can't pronounce any of the Greek islands, but mostly around the Caldera of Fate? No. No. I I'm sorry, I can't actually remember the location. It's just a seaside village and the mission is literally called One Bad Day. And Cassandra well Cassandra Alexis, whoever you're playing as, just stares out at the end of the mission and just goes well, that happened. <laughs> well, well, I, I have. I some... swear, I'm not high. Not this time. It actually <laughs> well, happened. I swear. <laughs> well, guys, I have some very good news. Uh, we are coming. We're going very... to Nuka Village. N- not yet. Not yet. Yay! Oh. <laughs> um, no, we are actually being very close to one hour mark. Oh really? We did it! Wow! Okay. <laughs> wow! I didn't think we did this far. Celebrate good times! Come on! So, yeah, I know that Michael is like two a.m. for you, so I wanted you to be able to 
sleep a bit today. <laughs> Jokes on you. Sleep is well the worst. But um, does anyone have any final words they want to say before we wrap this up and I can start editing this and getting homework done that's due in three hours? Yeah, I was about to bring up one thing. I'm going to make it brief. To those of you who, for some ungodly reason, still play Odyssey, don't. N- never underestimate the chickens. Michael, you brought up the, the chicken. Skyrim chickens 2.0. Yes, those things will legit kill you. I was killed by chickens. It was the most embarrassing moment of my life. Okay, that's all. They make okay. you they're Kentucky Fried Fucker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, all right, guys. Um, thank you to Bellic and Michael for joining me tonight on this first official episode of the whole changeover for the podcast season three we're still keeping the season three because we're not going to let it be the shortest season of this podcast yes um, don't let my prediction come true <laughs> thank you for having me i would just like to say that flavius is a scrub deal with it oh no <laughs> oh god no no <laughs> no <laughs> Um, so real quick, I do want to mention, <laughs> real quick, I do want to mention some quick plans we have for the future. I'm going to make an official post for this, but one thing we're wanting to do is dramatic readings of older fan fiction for Assassin's Creed. So All if right. you have a fan fiction that you're, of AC. I like it. No, no. Okay. Stop. <laughs> If there is a fan fiction that you want to submit in for us to read, I will warn you, we are going to make fun of it. <laughs> um, <laughs> we are going to try to read it as seriously as we can. So some rules is we are going to read over the story before we just start reading it out loud and realize, oh, no, this is bad. Uh, make sure to follow the Assassin's Creed guidelines and the Amino guidelines that we have set. Um, PG-13, not getting crazy into the 18 plus realm. We do have a lot of younger users. Um, keep it clean, no intense gore, no extreme nudity, etc. If you want to make it stupid, oh, there's this st- opportunity there. Yeah, if you want to make it like super stupid, go ahead. If you want to write about how Ezio like goes in has fun like a million different people and then tragically dies from an anvil falling onto his head, go ahead. I don't care. Don't give them any ideas, Em. <laughs> uh, I will make an official Look, post about Ezio this. Ezio has enough things on his plate besides okay. vaginas. <laughs> but I will make an official post about it for the rules and so forth. Um, some others, we are going to find some online that are very, very old. I'm talking like Assassin's Creed 1, Assassin's Creed Um, So that we're not making fun of more recent stories. Be able to say, hey, this writer has grown and developed. But we're going to have some fun with their older stuff. And also, just a quick reminder, I'm going to try to get this edited quickly. Uh, round two of the Draw It In Your Style is coming close to an end on the 14th. So if you do want to put in a submissions, please, please, please get that in soon. And we will at that time announce our winner for the first round. So yay! <laughs> yay! Um, so that yay. is all. Thank you everyone for once again to the council podcast and hope you guys have a good night.